Welcome back. This is Lesson 28 of Ministry 110 Spiritual Foundations of the Worship Arts Conservatory. Last week we spent, or last lesson, which probably was last week, we spent uh, a whole hour in prayer. And we used the 12-step prayer method to do that. Um, following that, you had some homework to do, but not a lot. Um, you had a discussion on one hour in prayer. We had a reading from the handbook, Appendix 1, and you may want to start preparing for the final exam, is what I suggested last time. And now, obviously, it's getting very close because that is going to be the next thing. Next week, we'll be um, looking at what well, we'll be doing the final exam. So, what we're looking at today is the Spiritual Growth Planner, Spiritual Growth Planner. Um, this is a tool that you read about and, and she kind of walked you through in the appendix there and maybe you've already done it. What we're going to do today is just talk through it and I'm, I'm, there's a tool for you to use online and it's also going, it's also in your, um, in your lesson as one of the links. So if you go to the links, you can click on online spiritual growth planner and there it is. So. Um, this online spiritual growth planner is essentially an online version of what you read in the book and it just makes it easy for you to do. What I want to do is I want to just walk through it and talk through it and you can kind of, if you if you did it already once, now it's going to be a chance to kind of do it another time a little, maybe as I, I talk through it, you might think through some things a little differently. The main point here is I want you to be thinking about what does this look like as you move forward in life. We've studied so much material. The main thing I'm hoping you gain from this class is a bunch of tools. I think of it as a toolbox. And so it's not like every day I get up and I open my toolbox that I have in my garage and I pull out my Phillips screwdriver and I go around in life looking for places to use a Phillips screwdriver. That's not the right way to handle the toolbox. The toolbox is there and has a set of tools in it and when I need the Phillips screwdriver then I go get that Phillips screwdriver but if I need a wrench or a ratchet or um, you know and I don't really use tools very often but if I were to go in there for any of my other tools you, you pick the tool that you need you know you, you get the pipe wrench out when you need to fix something that has a pipe but you don't use the pipe wrench when you need to turn in a screw or pull out a screw, right? So we need the right tools for the right time in our life. And for and so when we started this class, we talked about seasons of life. We talked about um, stages of the journey. All that stuff that goes in. The point is that we don't always use the same tool. It's not going to be the same all the way through our life. And what I've hopefully given you now in this class is hundreds of tools in your tool chest. When I um, was younger, I just had a few tools in my tool chest. But as I fixed more and more things in my house, my tool chest has grown. Now, it's nothing like my dad, who was a mechanic, and he had tons of tools. I just have a few tools in a couple boxes, um, tool, tool boxes. But hopefully what we've done for you is you've went from a few, a handful of tools that you use when you want to spend time with God to now you have over, you know, you have hundreds of tools that you can look through and you can say, you know, I need a change and you can pull out one of these tools that you've used in this class. I hope you, you hold on to this information, you hold on to these books because there's nothing more important you can do in life than to build your relationship with God. It is the most important thing and we need tools to do that sometimes because we just don't quite know how to approach God and how to to use these um, how how to grow in our relationship with Him and and so that was really the whole purpose of this class is to give you a bunch of tools. But I don't believe that you should always use the same tool. Nor do I believe that the tools that are working for you will necessarily now will necessarily work for you twenty years from now. It may be that some of those tools need to change as your life changes, and so where the the tools are just that they're tools to be used at the time that they're appropriate for you 
and there's so many options that you have out there now. Hopefully you're encouraged and excited about the many different things that you can spend time with God doing. So that leads us to the spiritual growth planner because the whole point of this is, well, what tool do I need now? And what should be, I be doing in my next, you know, when this class is done, am I going to just toss this all off to the side and go on back to what I was doing? Or is there some spiritual disciplines that I want to start working on right now? And what I want you to do is have a plan for what you're going to do when this class is done. So if you go to the Spiritual Growth Planner page um, that the link takes you to, which is at worshiparts.net forward slash spiritual, and then there's um, um, an underline growth underline planner dot html hopefully the i mean the link should work and it should take you there anyhow and the spiritual growth planner like i said is taken right from the appendix first of all what the author wants you to do in this planner is to get an initial impression of where you are which ones of these disciplines from that worship Worship the Trinity, open yourself to God, relinquish the false self, share your life, hear God's word, incarnate the love of Christ, and pray. Which one stands out as the most, right out instinctually, without doing much thinking about it, which one hits you as the one that um, has, you have the most desire for at this moment? So you just look at this and you pick whichever one, and you can rate those from a low desire to high desire. And so take a moment, if you haven't already, and rate those. If you did it already in your book, that's fine. Then um, you can just transfer it over here if you want. Uh, this is just to give you a sense. Is your desire the most for worshiping the Trinity, and how much desire do you have? Notice that this is going to rate from 1 to 5 on each one of those. So you don't have to say, I don't like this, and, or this is, but just where's your desire? If your desire is a one on something, don't, don't feel guilty about that. We're all different. And right now, where is God calling you? What's the desire he's placed in your heart? And that's okay, whatever it is. Now, I'm going to keep moving through this so we can get through the whole thing. But I want you to understand that you can take as much time as you need on this. You really shouldn't rush it because this is going to be what you do next, uh, you know, hopefully. I'm hoping that you will walk away from this with a plan as to where you go with your life and your spiritual time with God um, in the next few months. The next, so then it, this planner takes each one of those areas and asks you some questions about it and has you think about it. So first of all, when it comes to worshiping the Trinity, am I celebrating the love in glory of God with reverence and joy. And so where, you know, do you feel like you're already celebrating with reverence and joy and how much? Where am I longing to move into deeper celebration? So those are the main thoughts that go around the worship the Trinity one. So you're going to take each one of these categories and you're going to rate it as to how you feel. And it would go from one being, this is not true about me, to four saying, this is consistently true in my life. So worship the Trinity. I take time to celebrate God and acknowledge my limits by deeply entering into a weekly Sabbath day that is different from every other day. So is your Sabbath day distinctly different? Does it need improvement? Is it not true at all? I mean, there's no difference. If you're going to church, I would say there's some difference. And so... Think about how much, how different is it? Is Does it need more work? Do you think it's there most of the time? And then number two, I am aware of where I place people, experiences, and images before God. Um, are you placing anything before God? And if so, are you aware of that? I'm joyful, thankful person who expresses gratitude to God and others easily and often. Is that an area where, and I'm taking it as I'm talking about it, um, is that an area where you need work, or is that something you do well? I'm aware of God's presence in my life, confident of his love for me, intentionally celebrate our connection. Worshiping with fellow believers gives me a deep sense of joy in God's presence.
And as you fill this out, you'll notice that your total score changes. It's going to tell you right away. And then it, there's a place where you can click which one of these one or two is your greatest desire. Which one do you um, feel the deepest or passionate, most passionate desire? Now, it might be an area that's weak, and so you have a passionate desire for it because you want to make it better. Or it might be an area where you're strong and you just really love it and you don't want to let go over it, of it. And then the second one, open yourself to God. How am I opening myself up to God in deeper ways? Where am I longing to let go of defenses and busyness so I can become more open to God's activity in my life? So opening yourself to God so that he can work in your life. And again, you rate each category. So the first one, I regularly and intentionally make space in my life for prayerfully listening to God at home, at work, and with others. So do you have regular, intentional time to spend with God? I can admit my mistakes, weaknesses, and growing edges to God as well as to others. I enjoy time spent alone with God in quiet reflection. I recognize and live freely within my limits. I pay attention to my feelings, my body, my losses, my needs. I don't need to be doing something for God or others in order to feel good about myself. Again, when you've rated each one of those, and I'm going to keep moving. Um, I don't. Uh, if you need more time, pause the video. I, I don't want you to be rushed in this. I want you to go through it. But I'm going to keep talking and keep moving. So if you need more time on any of these to think about it, just pause the video because I want you to take as much time as needed to think about each care, each area. And then now that you're done, then you would take and and do is one or two of these a higher desire for you? And then you would click the box if so. And that takes us to relinquishing the false self. How am I growing in self-awareness and becoming more authentic in my relationships? And where am I longing to let go of secondary things so I can give myself more authentically to God and others? So this is all about letting go of those things that we put as barriers between God and us and others in us. Am I, so first of all, I am aware of my sin and blind spots and how they hurt others. I easily apologize to others and seek to live out my true self in Christ. I am able to leave the crowded, noisy world of acclaim and doing behind retreating into silence and solitude with God and letting him restore me. I recognize the voice and activity of the Holy Spirit in my life. I recognize my addictions and compulsions and am committed to living free of them. Again, I, I encourage you to spend as much time as you need here. I don't want you to feel rushed. But once, you've, once you have marked those five areas, then you would go up and click on which one you feel the deepest desire for, whether it's to grow in or whether it's because you feel like God is just really working in that area in your life and you want to stick with it more. And then it has share your life. Am I connecting with God and others in a caring community? How am I longing to be with others in a spiritual community? So this is all about sharing our life with other believers. And, and are you spending time with other believers, sharing your life with them? So the questions, I have a relationship with someone who helps me grow in my spiritual walk. I feel comfortable opening my home, my heart, my faith and my life to people, not in my family. I am not judgmental towards others. I know how to make peace and deal with anger in constructive ways. I am not argumentative and contentious. Others describe me as honest, 
vulnerable, open, and approachable. I am not hypersensitive and easily offended. I give and receive love freely and easily. Once you've chosen those scores there, go and click for the desire that stands out the most to you. That takes us to hear God's word. Am I cultivating the knowledge of God, the character of Christ, and the presence of the Spirit in my life? How am I longing to be with others in spiritual community? And that is a mistake there. I don't know what that's supposed to say. Um, let me quickly see what my mistake is. I think I have the book open right now. I do. Um, hear God's word is where we're at, right? Almost there. What it should have said is, do I want to connect more deeply with God and his word, and if so, how? I may have that fixed before you see the video. Hopefully I'll find time to, to get in there and change that HTML. It won't be hard to do. So how am I, this, this section is all about God's word and getting into God's word and connecting deeply with God through his word. And then it has four questions. Am I growing in biblical literacy? And do I know how scriptural truth intersects with my life? On a regular basis, I am nourishing, I am nourished by spending time with God in his word. And I forget to mark these. Am I growing in biblical literacy and, and know how scriptural truth intersects with my life? I am nourished by spending time with God in his word. The Bible is alive and interesting to me. I have a plan for reading scripture. And so you go through those, mark each one of those. Again, take as much time as you need to think about them. And then mark which one of those, or two if you want, that you really feel the most passion for. Again, it could be because you need growth there, or it could be because God is working strongly there. That takes us to incarnate the love of Christ. Am I contributing myself and my God-given gifts for the growth of Christ's kingdom? How am I giving myself and my resources away to God and others? And then rate each category and click the checkbox, right? So this has a few more questions in it than the others. I work for justice and have a heart for the dispossessed and needy that is visible to others. I am just and fair with de in, in dealing with others. I honor my contracts and commitments, even if it inconveniences me. If your contract and commitments inconvenience you, there's a scripture passage where it says that I, you know, I keep my, I keep my word even if it hurts, and we we need to be that type of person. I know my gifts, and contribute them to the kingdom of God. I'm more concerned about building God's kingdom than my own. I willingly set aside my agenda in order to share my possessions, skills, and time with others. The fruit of the Spirit is more and more evident in my life. People with problems, needs, sorrows, and losses seek me out. They know I care. So again, take as much time as you need in that area. Then go up and click the box where you feel the most passionate. Pray is the next category. Am I attending to God's activity in my life and listening to him on a regular basis? Where am I longing to connect more deeply with God? What do I want this to look like? So what is your prayer life, life like? It is easy for me to get around to prayer. That's the first question. My prayer life is not mostly about myself and my needs. 
I am able to authentically pray my emotions, losses, anger, doubts, and desires. I feel comfortable telling God all the good, bad, and ugly in me. I am comfortable praying out loud with others. I am, of a, I am aware of how God speaks to me, and I know how to listen to God and recognize his voice. So when you get done with that, again, as much time as you need, and then choose the desire that stands out most for you. And that takes us finally to the summary. And in the summary, if um, the web page is working right, and if it's not for you, you could try um, loading it up in Firefox or in Google Chrome or something like that. It, it, it works for me in Firefox, and so it should be working for you. What you'll find is that um, it's already taken all your scores and put them in there for you. So under Worship the Trinity, you'll find your score and what percentage that is because some of them had six questions, some had four questions. So a higher score may not be a higher percentage. It depends on the number of questions. So it'll tell you what your percentage was score of what the max score was possible, right? And by looking at that, you will get a quick picture of where are you strongest and where are you weakest. Now, I'm not going to tell you my scores. That I'm not that open. Um, I do have my faults, and so I'm not going to take them all and just lay them out here for you guys um, because uh, I would maybe do that in a small group where we had built a close relationship. But since this is a video, I don't even know you guys at all, some of you that may watch this video in the future. So let me just um, say that for me, as I went through this, my weakest area is incarnating the love of Christ. And, you know, that's not a huge surprise to me. I have been an extremely shy person my whole life. And to take what's inside of me and my private relationship with God and to express that outwardly is, is always a struggle for me. I, I'm very much, my flaw is that I tend to make my Christianity a personalized thing that I do behind closed doors. Not that I'm afraid to to say I'm a Christian in public. That I'm not afraid of at all. But what I am afraid, um, not good at doing, is anything that has to do with relationships with other people. So yeah, I do struggle with incarnating the love of Christ. That's a weak area for me. My strongest area was in hearing God's Word. I've always been into studying God's Word and spending time in God's Word and uh, been a Sunday school teacher since I was in college. And so yeah, that I, I see as an area that I'm, I tend to be good at. Well, I want you to look at yours and, and see those same things. What, what area is the area that you're weakest in? What area is the area that you're strongest in? And now, as you look at that, consider who you want to become. And it says, for each category, pick one growing edge that engages your desire to become more like Christ and type it in the corresponding box. So remember up there, you were supposed to put a box, a check in the desire. So for each one of those areas, go up and look at it, which one of those desires stands out to you as the one desire you want to write in each box. Okay, so for Worship the Trinity, what were the box or boxes that you checked? And then put that in there as, as your desire. And you go all the way through until you get down to the bottom and pray, the, the prayer category. And you're going to put one category that stands out to you. Now, once you've done that, then you would go and you'd put a number before each one in the order of importance to you, attending to the category of your deepest desire then, once you figured out which one is number one for you, then you would go to the table of contents, and which is found on pages seven to eight, I think, if, if your book is like mine. Um, and you'll go there and you'll find that it will tell you all the different disciplines that you've learned for that area. Which one of those disciplines grabs your attention? And when you find a desire that resonates with your own, you've found a practice, relationship, or experience that provides you a way to make space for God as you worship Him. And this spiritual discipline can be a gift to you on your journey. So 
what we've tried to do is help you to find a discipline that's going to be what you need for right now. Now, I think you can work on more than one discipline. So you might want to do that same practice for maybe your first one and your second one of desire. And remember, your desire might be because it's the one you need the most work in, or it might be because you're passionate about it. Um, I love studying God's Word, so there's no reason why I should stop doing that. But I also may need to pick up a spiritual practice and incarnate in the love of Christ that will help me to be better at doing that. So um, look at these different, look through this area and find the spiritual discipline you want to work on next in your life. And as you know, we're coming to the end of this, I think I'm going to be doing one more video that will be available for you next um, to help you prepare for the final exam. And, and that's just going to be a review of the material and a reminder of what to study. Um, but other than that, I think I'm pretty much done with this class. And I, I just encourage you not to make this a class that you just went through. But, you know, and you set aside and you never look at it again. But developing your relationship with God is the most important thing you can do. I keep saying that, but there really is nothing more important. And so don't walk away from this class without a plan to allow this material to change your life because it will change your life forever if you spend time with God every day from here on you're gonna be a different person and then you are now so five years from now you're gonna be a different person ten years from now you're gonna be a different person if you keep spending time with God and taking these disciplines to train yourself to be more like what God has called you to be I'm excited for you. I just can't wait. Um, I, 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 I hope you tell me what God has done. I would love to hear from you and how God has changed your life, hopefully through this class, and what you've learned that you're going to use. And so that would be a wonderful thing if you wanted to leave me a note telling me what is happening in your life because of this class. I hope it has made a difference. I hope there's things that you're going to be able to take from this class to use in the future. I know this is all material that I've taken and used not every one of these practices, I don't mean that, but I mean from this class and studying for this class and the material that I've, I've put together for this class in the past has made a difference in my life. And I use material that I've gained for my own personal walk, and so I hope you do too. Um, homework. Well, your homework is to do the discussion on your plan. So there's going to be a discussion question on your plan. And the... Um, that is, that's all the homework you have, other than the knowledge that you have a final exam coming up. What's on the final exam? Same as I said before, which is everything from the previous tests. Now here is the good news. No trick questions, and even better than that, only questions from the previous tests. I'm not even adding a new question. That means one way you could study is just to go back to the previous tests and know answers to every question. You could do that. And then if you do that, then you're going you're gonna to pass it. No questions about it. Um, or you can go back to the review sheets that I gave you and study everything on the review sheets. I would prefer you do that because the review sheets were given to you because I felt that was the essential information from this class that I wanted you to all make sure you walked away with. I, um, I hope that you take time to, to really apply this to your life as I've said and um, I will see you in the next lesson for our final review before the final exam. Let's pray. Father I thank you for this time that we've had to look at um, our plan for the future and how we can grow best with you in, in the next few months, years of our life. And so I pray that each one of us would take seriously the need to continue to grow and to find spiritual disciplines that are going to move us in the right direction in our walk with you, that are going to draw us closer to you, that's going to cause us to look more like you. Um, and we pray that you would guide us each in doing that. I also pray that you'd be with each one of the students watching this class um, that you would help them prepare well for the exam, that you would give them wisdom on what to study and how to study so that they would be ready next week, next lesson for their exam. 
And um, we thank you for all that you've taught us in, in this class. I pray that your spirit would go out and move in each heart to draw them closer to you through this material. In Jesus' name, amen.